Okay, Kelly Bennett, thank you so much for joining me today. So if you could um, share with everyone, what is the name of your school, where you're located? Yeah, we'll go with those two first. Yes. Um, yeah, my name is Kelly Bennett, and I co-own Valencia School of Music with my husband in Westfield, New Jersey. And how long have you been offering Kids Rock? Well, we started in 2019 to offer Kids Rock, and uh, we had a little bit of a hiccup around uh, March of 2020. Uh, we actually we, didn't we won't mention it. that here. <laughs> yeah, so it was uh, since 2019, and there was probably only a two or three month blip where we didn't have any active classes so um it was it was since i mean pretty regularly since 2019 uh so that's five years and what are your three top marketing strategies or tactics to promote the program well first having a really good website page that it's like the the search and find it is the most important thing uh for us because people actually call us actively about kids rock um and then uh, I guess and are the they calling sub- about it because of the website or because they heard about it or a combination? Well, that's my next one oh, sorry. <laughs> is that, you know, we, oh, that's OK. Yeah, where where um, we offer killer classes and a great experience. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of our, our experience is part of what sells it to people who make referrals. Um, so if there are some people just searching for music. Our, our, our area is a very like activity dense area. Um, and I will say that that is one of the, the, you know, unforeseen advantages that I have where every kid is in, but at the same time, every kid is in soccer, they're in horseback riding, they're in a ton of different things. So, uh, yeah, every parent wants their kid in music plus 10 other things, but then that saturation also works against us sometimes in that, you know, oh, the soccer schedule is out and you don't have any classes that don't, that aren't at the same time as kids rock. So, you know, that's, um, <laughs> you know, I, they're looking for us. They're actively looking for us. So I make sure that we're the best place to find information. And then I also, um, you know, the referrals, the the families who love it, like, oh, my son's friend loves Kids Rock. Uh, so, yeah, that's always an easy way to market is just have an amazing product and have an amazing service and give an amazing experience that they won't forget. We work really hard to make sure that the shows and everything are unforgettable. Um, and then another one is that... Um, We, you know, people will call about lessons for that age group. And my staff knows 100% that we do not offer lessons to kids who are that age. We offer kids rock. And, you know, that marketing, um, I guess, I mean, I guess it's more of a sales tactic, but that's a, but they're not calling to ask for that. So we have to now hook them into something other than they thought that they were asking about. So... And um, I, I do want to dig a little bit more into that. Sure. I forgot to ask you, how many kids do you have in Kids Rock? Last I counted, well, if you count the spring break camp, then we have 42. If you count all the kids enrolled in summer camps, then we are like breaking 60. Um, but so on average, is, what do you typically? Um, usually, I mean, usually every class is full. So it just depends on what I'm offering, what I have time for um, and what I have staff for. Um, so I usually have right now, like with, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven classes, only one of them has half full. So 36, 39, it's not 40. I sit around 35 to 40 at any, at a given and time. So Except for summer, like, it's a little lower. Sounds like you're maxing your classes to six kids. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, I can do seven, but I don't ask my teachers to do that. <laughs> and if, if you do seven, what do you do? Three on guitar and then like a third on keys? Yeah, I can do three on guitar. Um, no, no, I, I have a bass. We do bass. Ah, oh, that, so we that's... Because the bass is set up, you know, we have the Squire mini bass, and we just don't pull one of the strings off because they're big enough. Like the fine motor skills, they can get across the bass strings. So it sounds like from a marketing standpoint, you know, you've put a lot of energy into the website. You've put a, mm-hmm. um, you have a really specific approach on the phone in terms of, look, if you want you know, like, this is how we do it here. Everyone in yep. this age group goes right in the kids rock. Sounds like you're putting a lot of effort into the events, the performances. Tell me a oh, little yeah. about, about that. Yeah. So every three months, oh, well, not every three months, but like three times a year, December, March, and June, we have our showcase. Um, and we actually have some older groups too, who like, so we'll do two or three kids rock bands. Uh, band A will play. They're usually the youngest and least experienced all through, you know, the ones who are doing more advanced songs go later. 
So band one plays, band two plays, band three plays, and then they all come up together at the end and they sing their singing song, but with a band. Like, so all of the assistants, and we have a lot of students who um, need like service hours or just love us enough to help us out for free. So, uh, but we do a lot of paid paid work too. As they come up through the program, we do pay them. Um, but they basically, you know, we have a base student on base. We have a, you know, sometimes I play a drums and I'm not a drummer, but it's close enough. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we have the teacher who's leading on guitar. You know, sometimes we'll get a really cool student who can solo for the, you know, rock and roll band song. And the kids just look at them like, oh my goodness, I can't even believe what's happening right now. Um, and that's really fun. They just have such a cool experience. Uh, we do it at a local restaurant and bar that has mm. live music. So it's a place that I've played. Um, my husband has played, uh, you know, our rock bands have played. Um, oh, hold on once. I'm sorry. Hold on yeah, one yeah, second. Yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like, you know, my my next question was going to be, you know, what do you tell, what do you say to parents when you, um, when they say they'd rather do private lessons, it sounds like you're just firm with, hey, this is how mm-hmm. we do it here. Is there anything that you have your staff say on the phone to help prior, or do you say anything on the phone really designed to get the parent excited and pumped up with the hope that they don't push back and ask for the private lesson? We have a couple of, of different um, ways to go about it. Um, in our town, <laughs> we have a lot of parents who are just they like you know and it's funny because I never really sympathized with them until I had my own child um and now I can see the desire like when we started swimming lessons I wanted her in the next level well no she's amazing um but of course I think that she's my child and I I have a little sympathy now for the parents who are like no I just you know and sometimes there actually are scenarios where it's like a group class is not the best thing but it's pretty rare and we generally say look try out first we're always you know if they if they give us pushback we say try out one class and then look, if it's really a bad fit, you can always try out a private lesson on us, but it all defers back to the teacher. The parent does not get to make that decision. Mm. The parent does not get to make a decision about placement, but we were like, you know, if a six-year-old wants to do violin and they're begging parents for violin, then we usually say like, try a kid's rock class. If it's not, you know, they still want to try violin, you can try one on us um, because you've already tried what we asked you to try. And that's just like one of my, our little things to get them hooked in. Um and to at least give it a shot. Now, one of the things that we talk about is the benefits of Kids Rock. And it's funny because I always say, you know, I wonder sometimes if Dave was just kind of like putting this program together and he just didn't even see the the gold and platinum just underneath the ground of this program. Because it's yeah. funny, when I first looked at it, I looked at it and I was like, and I'll be totally honest. I remember the sales thing with you and I was like, there's no way these parents are going to think this is educationally viable. I remember thinking of that and I was like, there's no way. Um, these are, I know our parents and I know our, our families. And like, you know, you, you have parents who like, they've already decided their kid is going to go to Stanford or their kid is going to go to Harvard. Or, you know, we have so many Ivy League parents. We have doctors and lawyers. And I'm just think, sitting there thinking, I don't know if they're going to see the value in this until I started teaching it. And I was like, and I'll talk to them and I say, you know, I don't even, I don't think the guy who made this even realizes how gold this is. Because not only do you have like, it's, slowed down and it's it's at a, an appropriate pacing for the development of these children but it incorporates fine and gross motor skill development it includes a social aspect that is you know you cannot separate that at the four to seven year old age group you know they you know i come from a, a, a music ed background and i can just look at this and say it's 100 percent comes down to developmental appropriateness mm. and when i talk science with them they have a hard time arguing with me um, and like I said, like I worked for music together, like I worked for music together's home office. Um, and I watched what a great program they put together and how bad they were at marketing. Oh, I probably shouldn't say that on something you're going to put out there in the world. <laughs> well, you know what? Even if they do hear it, it's always good to get feedback. Yeah. We all want to grow. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I was doing a bad I, job in marketing, I'd want to, I'd want Oh that my God, you never. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's crazy how, how great, um, I, I've seen, and, and the other thing that we've noticed, and this is just from years of doing it, is that the kids who do kids rock and then go into lessons at like seven or eight years old and the kids who come straight in at seven to eight, uh, over the course of the last five years, we've seen that the kids who go through kids rock have a base knowledge and a base fundamental theory understanding that the new, the kids who walk right into lessons, it takes them two or three years to catch up to the kids rock kids. Wow. That's so fascinating. Yeah. And here's the number one thing, the number one, and, I, and this is the conversation I have with parents, just because I love talking about this program. Like I love it. Because I love being like, oh, you think you know something about something. Let me tell you about something. 
Um, the other thing too, is that Kids Rock teaches something that is very hard to teach in private lessons it, to anyone under 10. And that is that time doesn't stop in rhythm. So you know how you have that piano student who's like, da, 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 da. Yeah. And they stop. In Kids Rock, they learn the beat never stops. Never stops. And it's one of the things that like I had, like I've been teaching for almost 20 years. And this is like, impossible to teach in a private lesson. But in Kids Rock, it's just part of how it works. Right. You can't force it in the private lesson. Right. No, Where, no. I, I mean, you can maybe do it if you're playing along with them and you're playing and they stop. But it's in that group. It, it's almost like maybe another analogy is flying where everyone right. in the group is <laughs> flying. One kid falls off the airplane. The airplane's mm-hmm. still flying and the kid just has to jump back on. He's going to jump back on. Where right, in was. the private lesson, there's that 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 time isn't constant. Yeah, maybe there's a metronome going, but there's no constant. You can always reset the time with one other person. And I think I think what I've seen with teachers and the, and the tendency for teachers in private lessons is that they will stop for their students, and right, they will go back be because it's the kind it's the kind thing to do. It's the patient thing to do, but it's not the best thing to do. Right. Well, and you have to force yourself to keep that time going. Or right. when it's when it's a collective, when it's a group and an ensemble, an ensemble yep. of peers and you fall off. And, you know, yep. it's also sometimes I've noticed in Kids Rock is where a kid will the drummer will flip the beat or a kid mm-hmm. will be on the wrong chord and they're kind of hanging out on the wrong chord. And you see on their face, all of a sudden the light bulb goes off. Yep. Something's wrong and I got to fix it. Yep. And, and I'm going to look for the answer. Right. And th- they'll just self-correct. Yeah, exa- exactly. They understand more about music fundamentally without having to put words to it. Right. And and when you talk to a parent about that, and like and and like like I said, like they really like it when I go into the science, and I get real sciencey. I'm a singing teacher too, and man, do I get into the science with everybody? And they love to hear about. They feel confident about making because, like, what are we selling? Right. We're not selling music. We're not selling. Nobody wants their kids to try to like play guitar professionally, (laughs) like none of them. What we're selling is that the parents feel really good about doing the best thing for their child. Yeah. That's what we sell. We don't sell music lessons. And the second that we stop trying to sell ourselves as the best music lessons and start trying to sell ourselves as the best thing you can do for your child, that's when you have someone who's really looking for what I have to offer at least, because I don't care if I have kids go to school for music. I just, I tell them not to go. <laughs> you know how, how many students I've been like, don't, don't, don't do it. It's a trap. I still have like, we have still have two at Berkeley, two at Belmont, you know, a couple, one at Cincinnati, one just graduated Paul Wall. Like we've had our kids in, in, uni- in universities, but we just like, this is not about, it's about building confidence. It's about finding the best version of you. Yeah. through something that you can express yourself with no matter where you are in life. Having that ability to connect to music with other people is like so important. Um, so yeah, so well, you want to do the great, best thing for your kid? Come to us. <laughs> and it's a great message to share with your teachers and in all your marketing. Yeah. It's hey, teach, teach, teacher, teach with that in mind. Yeah, you know. Um, so, yeah, so we bring it up at pretty much every monthly staff meeting too. And you, everybody's got to kind of be on board with that. So two more questions. Sure. One, I'll ask the questions and then we'll tackle them one at a time. One is what advice would you give to a school that's that just got the Kids Rock license Mm -hmm. and they're a month away from launching? And then Mm -hmm. we'll also then tackle what advice would you give to a school that's struggling with filling their classes? Okay. So one thing I would tell both of them to do, um, and that would be to hold a couple of open house classes. Let people, I, I don't do free classes because those are spots in actual classes. I have a separate time where I'm, we might be closed for a holiday weekend. We might be coming up on the holidays, you know, it might be Thanksgiving weekend. It might be, you know, uh, you know, Memorial Day weekend for the summer camps. And we'll do a, a demo class and, you know, we'll have either me or one of our, you know, more advanced teachers will teach it and we just do a regular class. Um, you know, we never do pre- like free trials for anything because too many people have just not shown up. So we're like, okay, well, let's do demo classes. You know, if I'm there, it's not a big deal. If we have, we, we, te- we pay a teacher for like, you know, one class, but when we start giving away spots in classes um, to people who just aren't going to take them seriously, then then we're losing other students who are serious. 
So, and that's my philosophy on it. Not everybody has followed that, <laughs> but do a demo class or two really. And, and, you know, one of the things that I used to do with demo classes and new, new, um, like programs is I would do what's called like uh, a thousand eyes, right? My thousand eyes marketing. And that is, so for every Facebook post, we would get 50, 50 sets of eyes really looking at it. Mm. For every email newslet- newsletter, where we probably have like 200 eyes looking at it um, and really like maybe 150 really reading it and really seeing it. Um, and then every time we do, uh, and I don't like add like, I can't do Google ads and everything like that, but um I, finding a blog who will post it, finding, and then adding all of those visuals, adding all those sets of eyes up to a thousand. I want a thousand sets of eyes to see this and I should have no problem getting these kids into this class. I like so that. try a little bit of guerrilla marketing. <laughs> so, you know, I, and I love guerrilla marketing because it's how we started the school. I didn't have any money when we started, so we couldn't pay for marketing. Marketing is so expensive. But having those things, you know, um, encouraging other people to talk about it. Like, oh, hey, telling all your classroom, like every single person, I assume that, you know, for every three people, one of them is going to say something. So if I tell 10 people, I'm going to have at least three people hear about it. It's not a whole lot of eyes, but it's very valuableized. So, well, um, so yeah. And you haven't answered the last question, but I think you oh, sure. kind of have <laughs> at the same time in terms of what I'm hearing from you is it's just you're talking about the program. You're passionate about it. It's mm-hmm. coming through on the phone. I get the sense that it's kind of baked into your culture that yes. everyone knows about it. Um, mm-hmm. Is there anything in addition? Because you really have said some great things that I think could be helpful to someone who's struggling filling these classes. Is there any other advice that you would give them if they were to say, yeah. Kelly, I've got these two classes. And I only got like two kids in each. Like, I don't know what to do. What advice? I'm going to tell you what I, what I think I've heard a lot. Just talking to other kids, Rob people, how long are you training your teachers? Because behavior management, you could tell them, you could tell them, you can tell them, but you've got to be there to support them. I trained my teachers for three months and I spend that time making sure that not only do they know kids rock, but they know my kids rock. They know how I expect them to be manage behavior. Um, one of our things is every single class has to memorize that we make 500 mistakes to get really good at something. So when kids are making mistakes, it's not supposed to be, like, some of them are really hard for themselves. Some of them quit because they're not getting it. And I was like, guys, this has got to be part of this culture. We make mistakes to learn. So 500 mistakes. So that's just one of the examples of the things that I have expectations for what my, now that's not necessarily a kids rock thing, but it's a Valencia music kids rock thing. So much so that one of our bands named themselves 500 mistakes. <laughs> so, that's a great, that's a great yeah. name. And that's yeah. a great idea. So it sounds like, you're implementing some behavior meant strategies that maybe are, maybe aren't covered in the training, but you're yeah. there kind of in the room helping them with that. You've got to be in there with them. You've got to be on the boots on the ground. And it's a huge, like I was overwhelmed by the thought of it, but I was like, but I can't keep going through his raw teachers. I was going through them every four months, mm. four to six months. They were like, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. And Why I was like, they oh, do it? Why were they, they couldn't well, one of them was just overwhelmed by the kids one of them got like strep and just never shook it but um you know and if I had been there training him I would have caught that um I do I had one girl and my best teachers are high school students they're high school juniors and sophomores I have them for years my best student ever she's at Belmont right now she's taught for two years as a junior and a senior and she retained like it's always gonna be like a higher turnover class but she retained so many students and so many of them went on to lesson because she was just so good at it she was so fun and, you know, but she spent, and I realized all of this because she spent a year shadowing me in a class because she just liked being around me mm. and she, so she loved the school. And she, and after a year of watching me do it, she was like, no, I get what you're doing. I can do this on my own. <laughs> and she did it. Well, and, and it's training... interesting. It's, I used to say to my teachers, look, they're like, I don't know. I can't manage these kids. I'm like, you're managing five kids. Mm-hmm. They're, te- they're preschool teachers. They're kindergarten mm-hmm. teachers have 20 plus of them right. and they can, they can make progress. And I right. say to them, look, they are five-year-olds. So you got to like, let them be five-year-olds, right. but you also got to, there is a way to get work done and be productive. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, no, we, um, and like I said, just being in there the first three weeks, I have them shadow me watching the next three weeks. I actually watch, I take a step back a little bit and I let them take the lead and then one day I'm like, guys, I can't come in today. I'm just going to need you to take class. And then I don't show up. 
Right. And then I come back and like, how'd it go? And they're like, oh my God, you do so much more in here than I realized. <laughs> and I'm like, I know. <laughs> so let's spend the next six weeks doing that. Well, and I think yeah. um, well-managed behavior is w- the key to student yeah. retention with Kids Rock. Absolutely. Because the program does, it, it's, the program's successful. I mean, I've had kids in the program, you know, I've had kids go from four to seven in it. I've had groups form young and the whole group mm-hmm. stays together until right. they age up. But then I do talk to school owners who say, yeah, we can't keep our retention's bad. You know, every, you know, uh-huh. we can't keep them in for more than a semester. And I do think it's either a common, I, I typically think it's something's going on with the teacher then. Yeah. If, if we do have, any. we do have a handful of kids cycle out after every show. Like there's always a, like five or six kids. But yeah. when I told you that 40 kid number, I didn't tell you about the 15 to 20 I have on wait lists all the time. Interesting. And, you know, like, so every time we have a kid who leaves a class or three or four, because I think we have like four drop after this past show, because they just do that because they're young and they, again, they're saturated, but there's a wait list of an extra class for every class. Well, which is, it, it, it's also, you're dealing with when you're enrolling a five-year-old, you're dealing with a completely different type of customer than an eight-year-old. Right. Because the parent yeah. is, okay, my kid's five. We want to sample all these different activities. Yeah. I think an interesting, um, you know, some interesting data to look at is how many of those kids that do it for a semester drop out, come back later when they're older. And mm-hmm. that's something, or some of them would be seasonal. They do in the fall, they drop out, right. come back and next they come fall, back. You know, yeah. or, and I have a couple of kids who've done it. I have a kid who's been in it for two years, two years straight through. And he's like, I'm ready for bass lessons. And I'm like, oh, I love that. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I found the key to keeping kids the whole way through was for the band itself to form um, not only the kids in the group to form a, a sense of cohesion, mm-hmm. but even the parents. When I start yeah, hearing about true. Kids Rock kids inviting their other Kids Rock band members to their birthday party. Right. I'm like, ooh, okay, there we go. The <laughs> band's becoming a little more cohesive. Yeah. And that's something that I really would work on is oh, yeah. um, trying to f- facilitate those relationships. Because then those kids, they'll they'll stick with it through the whole you know process. Yeah. And I had the reverse. I had a bunch of kids who came in who were already friends. We just had a class of a bunch of boys who were just all friends. And they were like maniacs. I love them to pieces, but they were maniacs. And, you know. But a little by little, like one of them would drop out. He's like, oh, it's too much after school. Oh, okay. You know, a new kid came in. And then, yeah. and now two of them dropped out, but they, they were already friends. They already go to each other's parties. They already know each other. So sometimes, yeah, you still do have a little bit of that turnover. But again, it's just like making sure that people know about that. I'm just like, I think the biggest thing for schools that are struggling is that there's got to be a piece of it too, where the, they don't believe it. They don't mm. believe. I, I would challenge if you, if you really think this is the best program or if you, are scared of it or or maybe don't think that that it's the best option or you believe some of the pushback that parents give you, you have to just believe that you know more than they do. And I can tell you just, again, I've been teaching for 20 years. It is better than private lessons for that age group. It is 100% for 10,000 reasons. It is better than, it is absolutely better than, than those than those options, the one-on-ones, because they, it just, we lose more students due to disinterest when they go in at that age, because I mean, what kid sits one-on-one with an adult, anything else in their life at that age? Right. And they're not, they don't, they haven't developed a homework regimen yet. Right. They, they don't have those oh, we don't even, discipline skills yet. Don't, don't even get me into like practice. We don't like anybody, first two years, you're, my, our teachers are not allowed to push practice. Love Even it. for like 15 year olds, it just if they want to. And that's just well, a thing where it's well, you know, time for the relationship. And that's a whole other thing you need to build that relationship. Well, if you're delivering a great music lesson experience, mm-hmm. they're going to go home anyway and right. want to recreate that music lesson experience on right. their own. They're yeah. going to do it. And we call yeah, it that's... developing the carrot within. Mm. <laughs> Little Ayn Rand. A little Ayn Rand desk, but yes, we want to develop the carrot within. Uh, We want them to learn to self-motivate and you don't learn to self-motivate by doing what your teacher said. Right. You're doing, doing practicing because your teacher said so. You self-motivate because you had a cool recital experience and can't wait for the rock showcase. You create that carrot within because you, I'm making some progress. I'm like, well, you can make more, but you got to 
get it, you get out where you put in. And that's well, such an was, important life lesson. And my biggest fear when I first launched Kids Rock was that parents was me telling parents that there was no practice expectation. They were so uh-huh. relieved uh-huh. <laughs> to the point that I turned it into one of the um, benefits of the program. Right. It yeah. was one of my stronger selling points is, hey, look, you don't have to buy an instrument. Your kid's right. not going to, everything that you has to, that goes on with learning happens in the class. And the parents right. were thrilled. So it was, I yeah. realized, well, I don't really understand these parents so well. I need to better understand what motivates a parent with a young child. Yeah. Well, Kelly, thank you so much. This is um, super helpful. And thank you for uh, sharing your strategies of, of success with Kids Rock. Awesome. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. <laughs> it's a great program. And I, I, I always blast it to the heavens to all over social media. I'm like, if you don't get Kids Rock, you're out of your mind. You're missing a gold mine. We make a lot of money off of Kids Rock. <laughs> that's and great. we're going to be opening up probably four to six new classes next school year. Unbelievable. So, well, that's going to be great. More continued success. And oh. I hope it continues to add to your bottom line. Well, thanks. Me too. <laughs>